Let's kick it off. Last year was carnage in your market. <laughs> Indeed it was. <laughs> it was. Please make sense of, as you would say to me, look, man, last year was a bit of rubble. Where are we in that? Are we in the birthplace of recovery in crypto? Sure. Listen, we had a fantastic bubble in cryptocurrencies, right? 2017 kind of popped, the bubble popped at the end of 17, the beginning of 18. And last year you realized just how painful uh, bu pop bubbles can be, right? The market was down 90 odd percent, depending on what, what crypto you're looking at. I always laugh about the math of that, like, you know, market down 90 percent is down 60 percent and then another 65. Um, but you're still convinced. You're still convinced there's a recovery to be had. Yeah. So what, listen, what 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 happened is all the retail frenzy that came yeah. up and down washed out, and now you're you're in this process of handing off uh, ownership from from the people's revolution from retail to institutions, and our, all the architecture that institutions need to feel comfortable with this is being put in place. And people say, well, no institutions are in yet, and that's all just rubbish. You know, you're starting to see, first in the venture funds, and now in these hybrid funds, institutions like the Yale Endowment. I mean, David Swinson might be the most influential investor in the world investing in a fund that's based in Bitcoin. And so where Yale goes, people follow. And, you know, what's stopping institutions from investing in crypto uh, is a little bit the next guy in. And so it's one of these but what is Okay, so we, we, need the next, we need the next guy in. Who is the turnkey? I mean, there, there, there's what? Non-deliverable forwards at Goldman. There's the infrastructure at Morgan. But so what, it's, what been, it's been custody in some ways. So Fidelity had announced a custody solutions. It's yeah. been delayed a little bit because the U.S. government keeps shutting down. But I think last I, I, I heard it's, you know, March or so. Uh, the New York Stock Exchange is a crypto company called Bact. That's around the same time. And so all these things are just getting started. You know, February, end of this month, beginning of next month, middle of, middle of next month, you're going to start seeing custody come online. Uh, and that's the turnkey moment. It really is. And so there's, there's, there's four or five really decent custody solutions. All of those custodians are working with institutions. They've got, you know, Fidelity's got you know, 200, 300 customers lining up to, to, to be customers. And so, they're not going to all rush in on day one. They're going to want to see water run through the pipes. They're going to want to, but over the next six to 12 months, you're going to start seeing institutions put a small amount of, uh, of assets, of their assets. Now listen, a small amount of institutional assets is a lot of money. And we've kind of hit an equilibrium in this 3,400, 3,600 zone. Uh, could, could Bitcoin go down? Of course it could, you know, all markets can go either way. But it feels like we're just kind of grinding along on the bottom and the next move will be significantly higher. If, they, if, those, if those customers come in and that momentum builds, so if the floor is 34, 36, call it 4,000 for cash on, on a good run. What can you get on, on an uplift for the rest of the year if interest rises institutionally? You know, if you look back on any market, when you have these bubbles that go up and down, we're not going to bubble back up. Okay. We're going to grind back up. But if you start buying, you know, could you go to 8,000? Of course you could. And then also you're like, wait, that just doubled in a year. And then you see the enthusiasm pick up. I think what's what's telling is in 2017, we got almost to a trillion dollars of market cap. And if you actually add the coins not on, not in circulation, over a trillion dollars in a frenzy. And I think in the next run up, you're really going to separate Bitcoin from a lot of the other cryptocurrencies. I think, you know, there's 118 elements on the periodic table. Only one gold is valuable just because it's store of value. And is that what Bitcoin represents to you in our in that B world? Bitcoin is going to be digital gold. It is going to be a, a place where you have sovereign money. You know, not it's not U.S. money. It's not Chinese money. It's sovereign. And so sovereignty, it costs a lot. It should cost a lot, right? It shouldn't, shouldn't be. And so people say, well, Bitcoin's slow and Bitcoin's expensive. Yeah, they are. I mean, what about that criticism? Well, it's slow. It, it, have you ever been to Fort Knox? Like, we keep gold, we, you know, surrounded by guns and deep vaults. And it costs money to store gold. Like, gold's got store of value because people say it's valuable. And, and you know, we, we mine it, you know. And so the, the idea that it's supposed to be free and cheap is, is actually misguided. And so I actually don't think when you, last year we talked about crypto, everything was going to be a version of Bitcoin. And that's not necessarily true. You know, every blockchain doesn't need the same level of security. It doesn't need to be surrounded by, you know, tanks and guns protecting it. And so 
you're going to see other versions of, of, of cryptocurrencies okay. that represent, call it less secure. Uh, you know, if, if, if the, the blockchain is for secure value transfer, uh, if I'm selling you my digital glasses and they cost a dollar each, you probably need a, less, a little less security and, and a little less uh, safety than I, if I'm transferring millions of dollars. I'm going to turn left field because now you had a late night. I just want to pepper comment on, on, on markets. We've had this amazing relief rally in markets. Um, Trump's going to potentially extend the, the China trade talks. Look, there's a glint in your eye. Do you trust this equity market coded old fashioned market rally? I do, I do, I do. Listen. The Fed has gone on hold. They pause. That's a big deal. Um, there's a ton of buying power in the U.S., mostly from buybacks. We think there'll be a trillion dollars of buybacks this year in the U.S. stock market. It's a lot. Uh, and so you've got support from corporate buybacks. You've got a support from the Fed. Growth is fine uh, in the U.S. A little slower than last year, but not collapsing. Um, What's your top trade? You know, listen, I think being short dollars versus emerging markets is a great trade right now. Again, Fed on hold. Uh, emerging markets got beat up last year. And I think long equities. 